This YouTuber has gone from a shy and awkward creator to one of the most loved and fastest growing on the platform. Aaron, more famously known as Mr. Who's the Boss, started out making tech videos and eventually exploded when he produced content covering the stranger side of him. But for four years, he had a gigantic problem holding him back. And if he hadn't fixed it, his channel would never have hit his true potential. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic, another tech YouTuber, Marcus Brownlee, had exactly the same problem and had figured out exactly the same retention hack that caused exactly the same result. But what they both changed that enabled them to get millions of views? Well, before we look at that, we need to analyze the problem they both had to solve if they were ever to stand a chance on YouTube. And it was made clear due to a man called Albert. In the 60s, he established that the way humans communicate is 55% nonverbal, 38% vocal, and only 7% down to the words you say. Yeah, so basically your body language, your facial expression, and your tone, all of these things impact how your video's information is interpreted and received by your viewer. It's even more powerful than the words you speak. I know, right? Groovy. And that is what drives retention. Oh, one sec. And why Aaron and Mark have struggled for years, because they only communicated with 7% of their power. But how do they fix this? And what are they doing now that makes their videos 10 times more addictive to watch? There are three things we're going to look at that transformed them. The basic, the necessary, and the downright impressive. Let's start with the basics and see if you can spot it on screen now. Both of these creators have not just solved the issue, but mastered it. You see, when people start making videos, they hit record and they feel uncomfortable. Why? Because we overestimate the stakes of communicating to others. And we think things like this. I'm just not credible enough for this. What if people argue with what I say? I am not good looking enough for YouTube. <laughs> which causes anxiety. And unfortunately, because almost 90% of communication is non-verbal, that fear is what the viewers pick up on, and the result of that is catastrophic. I mean, have a watch of this, and let me know if you squirm a little bit. Okay, hi YouTube, Mr. Who's the Boss here. And in this video, we're gonna be comparing Sony's PlayStation Vita with Nintendo's Game Boy Color. So how did Aaron and Marques fix this? Let me make this simple solution clear on screen now. You see that? These guys don't talk to camera anymore. They conduct their words with very slow but deliberate hand movements, and that strengthens their message. They keep their palms open, which has been proven to be easier on the eye and more welcoming to viewers, and they avoid covering their vital organs, as this is what we do as a survival mechanism when we're nervous. This allows viewers to latch on to our points. But it also disguises our anxieties and sets a video up to have much higher retention as a result. But there's more. An experiment was conducted where a group of people were asked to watch a Wile E. Coyote cartoon and then record what they had seen. The catch being one half of the group had their arms tied behind their backs. And what they discovered was the group of people tied up actually found it harder to describe what happened in the cartoon. And they said, yeah, it was about this bear dog uh, trying to catch an Eskimo. So hand gestures don't just allow viewers to take on information easier, but they help you keep the beat of your speech and make finding your words a lot easier, which in turn hooks a viewer. And what's funny is four years into Aaron's journey, he actually fixed this issue. But unfortunately, he decided to shoot his video on a close like this, which meant his hands never really made it into shot. And Marques, believe it or not, did exactly the same thing in his journey too. They were so close, excuse the pun. But what if you're not on camera? What if you're just using a voice? Is all this power lost? Which takes us on nicely to the second thing the guys do to build retention. Let's demonstrate it in an old clip from Mr. Who's the Boss. The future is a really exciting place. 2016 is going to bring huge amounts of technology, which is going to change the way we actually live our lives. That might be the least exciting clip about an exciting thing I think I've ever heard. But listen to him now. Welcome to 17 of the wildest inventions, from fierce to fantastical to straight up untamed. What a guy. To harness the 38% of communication that is vocal, these guys don't say words, but they express them. And that means that even when it's a voiceover, your viewers are understanding your words on the level you intended. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to present the same lines in three different ways. Mr. Who is the Boss is probably one of the greatest YouTubers ever. Mr. Who is the Boss is probably one of the greatest YouTubers ever. Mr. Who is the Boss is probably one of the greatest YouTubers ever. Simply using more emphasis on one word in a sentence can make it mean something completely different. And that extra emphasis lets people know what to be excited about, hides any of your nerves, and it's a very powerful retention hack that these guys use all of the time. But we're just scratching the surface. This next thing I'm going to show you is probably one of the most mind-blowing retention hacks I've ever seen on YouTube. But before we get onto that, I want to talk to you about the thing these YouTubers do that is the exact opposite of some of the biggest creators on the planet. And it's all because of this. There's a lot of other YouTubers that do the over-the-top exuberant, like, 
150% version of themselves, my evolution hasn't gone towards that because I don't find that it actually makes the videos better. So to me, the tech is the star of the show. So I'm not trying to make me more interesting. Most of what I'm focused on is sharing the tech. For a creator to admit they're not the star of their own channel is tough, but it's smart. And that's what makes his channel so amazing because he knows what his viewers really care about. So to avoid overpowering that, everything he does is steady and calculated. And in YouTube terms, it's slow. But Marcus has figured out the style that works for his viewers, and that is a retention beast. And actually, Aaron is the same. He's calm and he's reassuring. But Aaron, even though things were going amazing, still had a massive problem. Marques. You see, there will only ever be one Marques Brownlee, and that means anyone out there who's just copying his style will only ever become a watered-down version of him at the very best. So for Aaron to ensure he didn't ride in the MKBHD wake, he had to do something to differentiate. And wow, did he do just that, with probably some of the most amazing retention hacks I have ever seen. And they're one of the biggest reasons every video he makes now gets millions and millions of views. But what did he do? Well, he started dancing, seriously. Watch this. Aaron pretty much always starts his video landing in his seat, which gives it some energy. Then he points to the left and the scene moves with him. And then he points to the right and it happens again. And then items fly in from the side and he's catching props from above him and then pulling them out from below him. And his hands emphasize his points and his body language paired with his calming voice gives it excitement without being too overpowering. And then his editor uses subtle movements, text and sound effects to complement this. And all of these things make it almost impossible to stop watching. There's always something new and fun happening, but it's never manic and it makes you smile. And that's because Aaron's videos are choreography. And that's the thing about the best YouTubers in the world. What you see on camera is a show, which creates an experience to the viewer that helps them connect with the creator on a much deeper level than words alone can achieve. And what I love about these two legends is they are proof that becoming a YouTuber isn't about being a natural showman, but developing the skills to become one. But that takes time. And even when you've mastered your communication skills, Skills, they alone won't grow your channel. Just like Aaron, you have to start to think outside of the box. But how do you do that though? Well, it starts by clicking this video because next you want to combine these silent retention hacks with some viral storytelling techniques that another amazing YouTuber uses. And that's gonna take what you've just learned and make it 10 times more powerful. <laughs> 